Uh, my name is Dan Holton. I'm CEO of Cypress Medical. Um, excited to be here today to give you an update on our company. Cypress Medical is a medical technology company focused on minimally invasive plastic surgery. And so there's a need in the aesthetics market for less invasive surgical options. Uh, surgery provides the best results. It's really the gold standard. Uh, but despite tremendous growth in non-surgical treatments, surgery remains relatively flat. Every major specialty, um, other specialty, has seen an evolution. Additional surgical treatments that are less invasive and allow for earlier interventions, uh, laparoscopic surgery, endoscopic knee surgery, and minimal access angioplasty, just to name a few. Yet the tools of the plastic surgeon have not changed for decades. Uh, needle drivers, elevators, retractors, and scalpels. Cypress Medical has spent the last four and a half years developing a technology that will change that. Our early work was, has been focused on addressing the unmet need in the facial aging market. There are really three factors that contribute to facial aging that you need to consider, and we've been talking about a couple of them at length today. There's really changes to the skin, so topical skin care, um, uh, energy-based. Um, you talk about volume loss, so that's really just uh, hollowing of the cheeks. And lastly is gravitational descent, and that is just uh, things moving. So for the skin, as we mentioned, there are uh, numerous options, and there's about 7.4 million procedures done a year. For volume loss, we have a lot of really effective fillers, hyaluronic acid, fat grafting. Uh, that rec rec uh, represents 3.2 million procedures a year. But for gravitational descent today, there really are no effective minimally invasive options. Um, really, the most effective options are brow lift, face lift, neck lift, and that represents about 200,000 procedures a year. And there's really a reason for that, because to address gravitational descent, uh, you need to address the underlying anatomy. You have to get deep into the anatomic structure and mobilize tissue known as the SMAS. Um, and that's the same tissue that's elevated during a facelift. Um, and this can't be done effectively with technologies that are uh, available today, such as thread lifts. Uh, barbed sutures that are uh, inserted uh, uh, externally really can't mobilize deep anatomic structures. Um, in addition, they're not fixated, so they're not well suited for suspending tissue. So our first uh, device, Exact, actually addresses this unmet need. Uh, Exact extends a surgeon's hands. Um, it really allows them from a remote incision to, uh, and without visibility to uh, accurately and precisely approximate and suture tissue. The device was FDA cleared in 27, April of 2017. We have several patents pending. We've done well over 20 procedures uh, dating back to uh, 2016. Um, and what's really exciting about it is every time we get it into a new surgeon's hands, they find another application for the technology. So it really does enable uh, the surgeon to, uh, to do a lot. Last year, we talked about our surgeon's excitement about using it in the neck. We hadn't done anything at that point. Uh, we've done a series of successful neck procedures since then, and I'll share that info with you. So Dr. Lou Bucky and Dr. Chris Godick have developed uh, two minimally invasive procedures for the face and neck, a pre-periosteal mid-face lift and a minimal access neck lift. Um, the procedures are safe and effective, and we've had no adverse events reported since we started our IRB work in 2016. Both procedures are in anatomical planes, mobilizing uh, the tissue, and they cause anatomic change. Um, and it's identical to the more invasive options. Uh, the minimal access and short duration of the procedure make them suitable to be done in the office under sedation. This is a 48-year-old patient of Dr. Uh, Bucky. Uh, she was concerned that the appearance of her face and neck, um, and it was really based on a resistance to fillers. She felt like they just weren't lasting long enough. And you can see in her two-week post-op here that uh, her cheeks are fuller and she no longer has the laxity in her neck. Uh, here's a close-up of her mid-face. Uh, her cheek is fuller and the corners of her mouth are actually elevated. And not only is her cheek fuller, but her nasal labial fold has softened. Uh, in the neck, um, you know, she regained her neck and jaw contour. And as you can see, all the wrinkles are gone. And this has really led to um, high patient satisfaction. And we have, um, you know, data from our IRB that also confirms this. It's also reflected in the uh, large volume of patient referrals that we get from IRB study, even though we're not commercially available. Um, and in one case, a patient referred over 10 of her friends and family, so our investigator was inundated with requests. 
And this is really because there's a large pool of patients that don't have a viable option and they're looking for something um, and, and that this procedure offer, these procedures offer. And the question is, what does this mean financially? So we're gonna look at this top down if we think about the market and if there's over $30 billion spent on aesthetics, targeting the uh, 10 million patients that, that are currently receiving skin and volume loss treatments, by converting 1% of those patients to, uh, to these procedures, we'd, we'd get sales of $75 million. And that's just really the first application. There's upside as we look to uh, other applications. But another way to think about it is more bottoms up, right? So based on interviews with uh, our key luminaries, we've characterized patient volume at a busy practice. And based on this patient, these patient populations and the current treatment pathways, our luminaries believe that they would do 100 of the mid-face and about three times that in the neck. And so to hit that same $75 million number we talked about in the previous slide, we'd need to be in 250 practices with, that look like this. And our luminaries also believe that by offering these minimally invasive procedures, they're gonna keep patients in their practice longer and it's gonna over time increase their other surgical uh, procedures because patients are gonna have a positive experience with, uh, with a minimally invasive. So what's next? Um, first, we're gonna execute on the launch of the device. We're gonna be shipping devices commercially starting after ASAPs. Um, in the next several months, we're gonna work with our luminaries to define training requirements and, and start and do additional studies. And we're gonna prepare our company to uh, grow starting in 2020. Medium term, we're gonna to to, uh, leverage the technology, leverage our IP and our know-how and the technology to address other, um, uh, other uh, opportunities. Sewing in of ADM during breast reconstruction, uh, minimally ac minimal access, minimally invasive breast lift, and uh, minimal access tummy, tummy tuck, to name a few. Uh, this is the team uh, that's executing on the plan. The core team has over 100 years of experience in both plastic surgery and medical devices. Um, in addition, we have a world-class uh, advisory board that we're working with. So in closing, you know, the, uh, the time is really right for patients to have access to uh, less invasive plastic surgery. And, um, you know, we're just going to make the process easier and less invasive. Surgery is effective. I'm gonna be here the rest of the day, and uh, if you have questions or wanna see a demo of the instrument, please let me know. Thank you.